Hello, viewers. This is prosthetics on Friday to solve your prosthetics questions and give you uh, useful lectures. My name is Zhou uh, In Ho. There are different pr problems that you encounter in prosthetics. So we are going to look at some of the top issues related to prosthetics. And as the first lecture, we are going to look into uh, abutment uh, screw loosening. And this lecture will be delivered by Professor Park Chanjing of the Gangneung Wanju National University Dental School. If you leave questions on our YouTube sites, uh, we'll be more than happy to answer them in the Q&A session. We look forward to your continued interest. So let me introduce Professor Park Chanjin. Please. Hello, I'm Park Chan Jin from Gangneung Wanju National University Dental School. Today, we are going to look at implant screw loosening. Actually, this is an area that you are already familiar with in the clinical setting and have also experienced complications. So it's not a new topic. So today, I'm going to focus on uh, more giving your in-depth knowledge about screw loosening. Actually, if we only talk about concept, it could get boring. So I focused on interpretation of those uh, concepts in my slides. I hope they are of use to you. So I'm going to focus more on you know, to prevent screw loosening, uh, we do preloading, and I think uh, internal connections is that you use uh, more. So uh, I'm going to uh, talk more about loose uh, uh, the screw mechanics, so you will get more overall picture. So we call this screw loosening. And uh, this means that, you know, screw get loosened or, you know, un untied. So when patients come to with the screw loosening, it's a result of a problem. And as a dentist, what we need to focus is not to uh, let it uh, go get loose. So there is a critical phase, you know, in the beginning of a screw being uh, loosened. So uh, that we want to prevent by giving preload. So if you look at that critical stage where it's about to get loose, um, actually, um, not letting it get uh, loose, uh, which should be uh, the focus. So uh, the reason for uh, loose getting a uh, screw being uh, loosened uh, is due to various uh, trauma and force uh, being uh, put uh, to the implant. I mean, the diagram exaggerated, but it's already loose, so it's actually being exposed, and this is a typical case. And the cause for screw loosening could be about uh, these areas. So it's related to uh, prosthesis, uh, problems encountered um, through surgery. And, you know, one uh, main example is uh, OFEX cyst loading. So you could think of cantilever. So cantilever means the uh, vertical uh, force or load that is put on from the uh, top part. And there is a load, but the OFEX load uh, means a f a direction from uh, or the force coming uh, from other areas, uh, not uh, directly vertically. So 
that extreme case would be the cantilever force, and it could be due to the uh, improper design. To have low office loading, you say, you know, to have low, uh, less force, so the contact of the biting force um, maybe needs to be a bit uh, weak. So there are various uh, approaches. So you could think of that. Uh, but uh, as explained here, the Im the manufacturer imprint, there are inherent ca causes. So when we say screw loosening for clinicians, uh, we you know ch choose a company's implant, and uh, the causes originating from that uh, company's implant design. Uh, could result in screw loosening. So for clinicians, while reducing the complex complications of off axis loading, other things, plus how to you know manage this inherent um, design uh, issues of the uh, imp implant uh, sh uh, should be the focus of the uh, clinicians. So if we have screw loosening, then there could be fracture, and the fixture could also uh, break, and then it's been removed. And for a patient, as uh, you know, for a long time, because uh, he or she can still uh, chew, uh, you know, they keep using, but it's loosening. So there's a soft tissue growing there and swelling and other um, complications. So as you can see here, this is very um, typical screw loosening. And here it's already loose. And this one, there is a uh, fracture. And on x-ray, it shows that implant fixture itself has fractured and result in the you know implant uh, no longer working so same here again for a few years it was in good usage but uh, it swelled and there was blood and x-ray showed there was a bone resorption and there was inflammation so we managed it and a few days later uh, there was a fracture so loosening resulting complications i mean there are few complications but the loosening is multi-factored so you know patients prosthesis or the original spec of the implant manufacturer all impact on this type of issues uh, so that cannot be all prevented but there are ways to clinically manage them so this uh, is an implant and inside you see the abutment screw bottom uh, there the thread is inside so fortunately if you can remove it it will be good but if it's loose and breaks then the tightened torque would no longer exist and internal can be removed but sometimes initially before it's uh, untied, there is a loosening, then uh, there's a torque in there. Therefore, unfortunately, implant itself also needs to be removed. So this is a very unique case. So here, cement type um, was used for restoration, and this is a screw type. And for this patient, here, there was loosening. But there was swelling there also, so we opened the flap, and it's a very rare case because implant itself is loose and it's used for a long time. Then implant itself, as we have seen before, it's not fractured, but some of the platform has been torn. So on the internal type, you have a lot of tear, but it's rare that in external types uh, uh, tears. So we talked about OFX loading and in process of design uh, with this could be very um, frequently reason for the uh, screw loosening so if you do a lot of uh, restorations implant placement means using residual uh, bones and um, there could be not very ideal con conditions so you need to uh, be very careful and as you see to four millimeters and here is six millimeters so if it goes beyond uh, the force that can be supported by the implant the momentum as it gets longer and longer the screws uh, has to bear more load so even in the same OFEX um, 
testing the load is near the implant or far from implant, uh, there could be such a momentum difference. And the biting uh, surface, uh, you know, you cannot always uh, place it uh, very straight and vertically. Um, you, but sometimes you have to do angled approach. So from the implant X, the same distance, but because there is an angle, uh, momentum grows a lot. So this conditions result in very um, bad uh, and inferior conditions and if it's long used for long time the screw can be fractured and even implant can also result in fracture so another example on the lower jaw side you see uh, uh, you have the, the upper restoration but here you don't see uh, gingiva so there was about retraction so here, to implant place and with the GBR, uh, even if you don't, if you don't do a straight okujo plane approach, uh, you have to have to do angled approach. So for prosthesis, uh, cro doing cross bite is to reduce off x, uh, but. If you don't do that, just do overjet base restoration, then um, this will be the result. And the implant uh, position is avoid to of OFX loading as it goes far. The cantilever uh, becomes bigger, uh, result in a more uh, crisis type of situation. So the screw loosening in the external and external condition connections all happen but uh, how are they different in mechanics this is a very beautiful uh, diagram so external implant and this is implantal implant and for this especially for the aesthetic zone because of platform switching you use this more and because it's easy to do surgery i do believe a lot of people uh, prefer this so if you see this strengths of internal connection type, there are many uh, strengths of internal type. It has thick sucker soft tissue, has a perfect seal, easy to do surgery, easy to learn the surgery, surgery skill skill. And, but there are also external uh, strengths, simple verification and others. So depending on what's uh, more comfortable for you or uh, what kind of uh, you know prosthetics uh, you have available uh, you can choose the one that is right for you anyways external implants there are different type but still on the top side uh, the it all looks about the same the it's mostly butt joint type connection so butt joint means uh, it's giving uh, a, a support uh, so it acts as a, a buttress so the top part, if there's force, then it uh, supports, gives the uh, uh, works as a buttress. So the external co connection hex uh, in this uh, type slip fit in the single load restoration it can rotate uh, in the uh, anti uh, in, uh, as an anti rotation. So that is the slip fit and you know in the connection it has a butt type uh, joint type connection so each company has their own originality in making implant and say they are is, is better than others but basically excellent implants are about the same in terms of connection so the shape you have this uh, top part and on the inside internally abutment screw tightens so it looks differently from um, outside, but when it comes to abutment and abutment screw tightening approach, the mechanism uh, is more or less the same. So not much a difference compared to internal implants. So if you see here, external implant connects to the abutment screw. So again, here preload is used. So this means that the uh, screws has female and uh, you know male thread and it goes to up to the full length and screw doesn't uh, rotate anymore but additional force is given so the internally in the screw intentionally tensile force is created and the tensile force is on this abutment screws head and inside the threads on the top side 
I mean, as later diagrams will show, it will get hooked in there. So this um, implant, I exaggerate a, a bit, but it once it connects, if you increase the force, it says like, for example, by 30 Newton centimeters, then like this, as the screw is extended, of course, it doesn't really lengthen the uh, screw, but with the force that tries to lengthen, and if there's a external force, it resists. And that is the concept of preload. And because of this, external implant looks like this. So that in the end, the abutment screw, this butt uh, uh, type joint here. So here, there's a tightening, and there's a tensile force on the uh, two sides. Um, so there is a compressive stress inside with support uh, coming from inside. And that is the uh, mechanics of the uh, preload. So this is a cross section. And on the on the external implant, and this is internal implant. And if you look at the joint, then the thread the, by implant uh, abutment screw. Some companies have three or four uh, threads, or some companies has up to seven to eight threads. And if you cross cut it to look inside, then on the right side is the implant inside uh, end of the female thread, and this is abutment screws uh, male. A thread side, and as you can see, the surface is very rough. So, if you look at the implant thread, um, if you actually cut it and look inside carefully, it's rough. So, if the screw has not been tightened or connected, you know, when you first get it from the company, open the box and um, look at the implant, you see there's been a lot of uh, processing. You sort of do the uh, milling uh, to uh, for it to be produced, and that's why the surface rub. And what is interesting also is that between uh, the mating surface between male and female thread, the distance is all different. What I mean by that is that this is now tightened screw. So this we I said the male uh, thread on the top side, and this is inside of the. Um, implant and here it meets with that and the this the space is all different a it's not different by company but even within same abutment screw each of this if you look into them actually the what you think is actually touching each other only two or uh, three so implant screw just because there are many screws uh, does not mean there is a lot of uh, connecting force. But anyway, external inflows, if you tighten here, then abundant screwed top uh, side and uh, the uh, male thread top side connects and there's tensile force and this concept of pre the preload and that same for the external internal connection. But about the screw tightening, uh, if you look at the inside, uh, here uh, in the buttress there is a stop stop in the external type but for the internal connection type the conical seal uh, structure and that is the difference with the external connection type so again the loose about the loosening if you look at the uh, uh, system inter interpretation of the mechanics uh, you have to see understand that there is a settling effect uh, so the settling effect means that if you uh, touch the the rough sides together, it becomes smooth. So the implant screw, when you first get it from the company and you you know tighten and loosen repetitively, then the made surface first the rough and surface meet, but once it meets many times, it becomes uh, smooth and becomes kind of flat. So settling effect is when it becomes kind of smooth, and that means the flat surface has smooth or flattened, and this one means the coefficient has become lower. So the rough meets rough, then there is a lot of more friction. But once it becomes flattened, the friction coefficient has become lower. So it can uh, means it can tighten more. 
So for the those that uh, study school, they actually change materials or coatings to make it tighter. But what we are interested in is here. So the preload that we have put on a continuous basis, when it tightens and loose, loosens, in other words, the friction goes away and the coefficient goes down, it tightens more. So as the preload goes up, then with the external force um, comes and, you know, there's more resistance, it will become stable. So when we treat loose, the preload goes up and, you know, f reverse torque is about eight to 10 to 20 percent lower than the uh, given preload, and that level is maintained, uh, so the rear torque stays high. But on the other hand, the it's flattened, but due to external uh, clinical environment, compared to uh, preload, uh, in other words, preloads go down, then the inherent the friction resistance goes down and becomes loose. So reverse torque, the the we anticipated preload uh, comes lower than the force that wants to loosen and result in the screw being uh, loosened. So the settling uh, effect, I mean, there are different um, uh, concepts by uh, lecturers here, but this setting effect does not result in uh, loosening directly. Uh, it's inevitable if uh, two rough surface meet. So after surface meet, the preload uh, needs to go up afterwards, and that is what I want to say. So, unlike the external implant, when it comes to internal implants by manufacturer, it looks different. So, not only the design, but also the connection area is all different. Some just has the conical shape, or some has the butt. Uh, this is the butt type uh, joint, uh, and some have a bevel, and then uh, comes internal shape. So, it's different. What is mostly common is that they do come with conical seal. Of course, by company, they have their originality. So in development phase, um, they say theirs is better. And you know, some company had uh, promoted the most uh, uh, taper, as you know. But anyway, this conical uh, seal is the biggest difference from the external type. So certainly effect, be it internal or um, in external uh, type all have that, uh, but in, for implant, be it internal or external, the conical seal is w for the internal type. And because of this structure, screw loosening could actually be uh, stronger. That is the conclusion I want to give. So for the internal Oh, well, it could say it's the strength of the internal type. Well, you could uh, have to take the parallel x-ray to sh see it. So for the um, external, this can be detected with the x-ray. So this is the benefit of the x-ray. But for the internal type, uh, even if it's loosened, it's uh, very hard to detect uh, through uh, x-ray. So it's not different from a few months ago x-ray um, before loosening. So x-ray detection is better with external. And between the two, is there a difference in terms of loosening? Uh, if you look at the literature, the numbers are about the same. On the external type of the 600 implant, uh, about these numbers became loose. And for the um, internal implant, the numbers are about the same. Of course, it's from the same company, uh, but uh, the numbers are the same. So screw loosening, uh, they say internal is as if there's less loosening and compared to external, it's better. It's because the external implant 
uh, has been around for a long time. The root form in the plant uh, being available and with the clinical results being good. At that time, the implant was external type and screw loosening exists from then. So the stress of the screw loosening existed from then. So internal uh, types were developed in a better condition because it became came later. So bad things of the external things, uh, they say, is the uh, now being compensated by the internal type. But literature shows there is actually not much of difference between the two types. And why is it? You have conical seal. And as I said, because of the settling effect with the full load increase with internal external, there is a resistance. And for the internal implant, uh, it even has conical seal. So uh, with the full load, if you put the prosthesis in there, should be no screw loosening. But as you have seen in this literature, there is not much a difference between external and ex uh, uh, internal type. This is because of this actual displacement. And this is something I want to uh, tell you before I close this lecture. So preload uh, is tensile force within the screw. And the clamping force, the, the external structure of the screw uh, tightens with the clamping force. So it talks about same phenomena. And removal torque, as I said before, now the settling uh, effect, because of that, uh, it loosens uh, at a lower level than the preload uh, level. So you have, if it's small opening, but large clamping force, there's no screw loosening. But if you have larger opening force, then of course, screw will get loose. So this is not a um, proper example because the material is wood here. So the joint separating force um, makes it loose. So if there's a separation force, it becomes loose. And uh, as the implant is uh, metal, it results in screw uh, loosening. So with the clamping force with the preload and the uh, external force from the clinical environment joint uh, wants to separate. So it's a clash of these two forces. And with uh, you use this type of torque controller for preload. And it's well defined now. You have narrow, regular, as a wide platform. And you choose the right one. And typically about 30 newtons up to you know 5 newton uh, there is available. And for the internal implant, this uh, Conical seal makes the overall actual uh, displacement uh, uh, go down by five to seven. So these are the effect, uh, factors affecting preload and to control uh, this, you implant makers to coatings or change materials or amount intervention is changed or also standardized the torque driver. So they try different things and there are different torque controller. And the uh, OSTEM initially had this, but now this type of uh, controller is very similar to a, another company's one. But what's different is that oh, this left side I don't use um, anymore because these are the manual um, ones and the top one was the electric controller. But uh, these two are not the same. Now, for this one, they were in place in position. This is, you call it ball. You pull it with hand, and you have gauge, and you pull it uh, as much as the number in the gauge. Then the be torque put in the implant. But what is here is different. So there is a breaking action one more time here. So I'm curious about this. So st strengths uh, will be the same. But you know, is this number reflecting this one or this one because of uh, additional braking? Is it uh, has a safety zone? So the action in, uh, between the two uh, here is different. But my uh, feeling, uh, this one, uh, the bottom one, uh, when you put preload on the maxillary side, I think it's better. Of course, it's not saying that this is uh, bad, but uh, using this uh, a bow tab is. Uh, better for control. So that's why it evolved from this one. So 
in this uh, line, the metal thickness and material would also have an impact. And this is internal and external implants. Now, we talked about the strengths of the two, but weaknesses, the internal, uh, there is this actual displacement. So it creates, uh, generally, when you put the preload, and in, with the biting force, where you chew, or inevitably it's uh, there will be displacement. So there is a tightening, and you put the full load with the 30 newton. It just stays as is. So there is no this uh, placement because it's a butt joint. But with the internal type, after tightening, if you put 30 newtons, then it goes down like this, and this is called actual displacement. And so a full load given, it also goes down, and with the of the patient, uh, there's a, a repetitive force there. Uh, it's uh, continuous. So, internal implant by structure inevitably has this type of displacement. So what I'm trying to say is that surgeon tightening and when the patient uses so there's tightening and then there's chewing and there's actual displacement and the full load disappears in inside and then result in screw loosening. So internal implant structurally compared to external type, I mean, because there is a conical seal, you would think it would be better, but in terms of screw loosening, there's not much bit difference between the two. So um, that's what all the data uh, tells us, even if indirectly. So this external type and this is internal type. And when you mastigate, uh, and as I said, the conical seal design, there is actual displacement. So I mean, it says exaggeration just for your understanding, but itself is, it's, uh, you know, few microns uh, is uh, enough to offset the load so that's result preload so that's a result in screw loosening so uh, internal type you need uh, uh, some uh, temporization period more than so than external type so you, uh, after some usage you remove that and final restoration you give full load again so that is the way for uh, you know uh, to make it good but still, it uh, still ex would expose to the actual displacement uh, risk. So this is internal implant and bottom is external implant. And this is tighten torque and you have the settling value. And the red line, uh, you see it's much higher level. And this is because of the actual displacement. And that's what you need to understand. And because that, you know, you take impression and you create wax pattern and you do temporization and then you do final restoration. So you have, you know, you take it out and put it in with different things and that results in more inaccuracy. So internal type, this compared to its initial strength, in terms of screw loosening, there's a lot of vulnerabilities and weakness. And when there's complications compared to external type, it's worse, gives you worse situation like wall tearing and other things. I'm going to talk about that a bit later. So in clinical setting, this one piece type internal implant impression comping compared to two piece type is not that predictable because with the cylinder, you tightening and depending on the force, the actual displacement also uh, occurs and there is no uh, cons con uh, consistency. So because of there's vari more variability, there's more unpredictability here. So what are the causes of the actual displacement? I mean, certainly in fact, I said exists uh, in both internal and external. So it's because of wedge effect. Conical still goes down because of uh, force and it results in wedge effect. It only exists in the internal type because of its structure. So internal joint be more stable that uh, what we thought to be true is actually not uh, reality because of the actual displacement so these are the external and tonal type and the initial tightening full load given and there was uh, reversed so this is uh, the first one is the left bars so after a while compared to external internal you have the full load and and uh, it's loosening so the force is lower here, and this is because of actual displacement. And what is also interesting is that 
this actual displacement happens in the beginning a lot and you have tightening again and they're loosening and actually goes up compared to the first time. So there's a lot of actual displacement and full load tightening happens again. Resistance increases, therefore resulting the reverse torque uh, going up. So compared to what he anticipated, I mean, that's because it goes up. It doesn't uh, mean that's good. There's a lot of um, offset and, uh, you know, uh, loss uh, in the beginning. Same again, this, if you compare the two, between the threat, settling effect, and there's this slippage and full load inevitably goes down. So uh, preload goes down. So because of the settling uh, effect, always it's lower. But in the this case, there is also retightening that is required for the internal uh, type. Because of actual displacement, if you tightening, tighten once, depending on the surgeon or the lecturer, they say, you know, do it five minutes later after four times tightening, uh, do it again, whatever. Uh, you know, they say the next visit, tighten again. It's, what is important here is that if there is actual displacement, then preload one time is not enough you know, to control this, to minimize the decrease of preload, internal type must have a retightening step compared to uh, external type. Another thing is that internal implant, you have the distance is the same as conical seal. In the clinical setting, if the distance was the same, it will be good. But if you have force coming down and the conical um, seal there is elasticity to trying to return to the original form, but you also have the force of coming from the side, and you know there is offset uh, also happening inside. So the conical so, uh, seal doesn't get the load uh, uh, to be the same. So if the resistance is low, one wood side will be concentrated, and from elastic it will change to plastic deformation. And in terms of screw loosening, uh, this actually worsens the uh, clinical environment, making it uh, lo lo come loose more. And this one is narrow type, and 5.0 is the wide type um, implant. And this is uh, looking at wall thickness, and this is FM study. But if you look at this one, if you and uh, you look at conical seal, the internal wall, and abutment wall where the slope meets, unlike the last three, you see more redness. This means that in the internal implant, because of actual displacement, as you go to the narrow platform, uh, wall thickness can happen more, especially, you know, bone uh, is not always flat, right? So even if you place implant uh, correctly after time, micro thread being exposed, or because there is a slippage or angled placement, so the thread can be uh, exposed, resulting in this type of situation. Of course, again, it might be ex uh, exaggeration, but you have to think about this uh, potential risk. So this is important for internal implant, as you go to the narrow platform, it becomes more vulnerable in terms of wall thickness. And if you, unlike the uh, three, you see there is a, a bit more narrowness. And here, the mating surface, conical uh, seal, how long it's in contact, or you know how difference is contact is not that uh, uh, important, but. In narrow platform, wall thickness becomes thinner, and if it's thin, there is more risk. That is what you need to remember. And another constraint is that internal implant abutment and the conical soil, and then you have hex. So internal uh, implant in the abutment at the bottom, there's hex, and that helps in terms of positioning, but it's not in anti rotation structure. In the internal implant anti-rotation structure uh, has an effect, but uh, internal implant is very small and it has a tolerance with uh, hexagonal octagon, it uh, goes around, rotate. So the uh, hexagon 
underneath uh, cannot uh, work as an anti-rotation uh, effect. But here, because actual displacement, the ones with the hex uh, type and the implant one, if the tolerance is designed to be very small, because actual displacement, it can come into contact. If it is a contact, it will result in fracture. A disaster. So it was well functioning implant, but sometimes you ha have this type of fracture, right? So it's broken because there is a loosening, but it's also because the, there is actual displacement, and if tolerance is very low, then there is a contact resulting in fracture. So it's, it's something you need to be mindful. So wall tearing, I talked about. So. This is for internal uh, implant, uh, what you can have on your hand. And this is internal implant. You have this tear in the wall. So narrow platform, you know, biting force. I mean, it's anterior on the upper uh, side. It has been used for a long time, 10 years, but still happens like this. So narrow plant. Uh, you know, no, don't use with the strong biting force. It's not the guideline. You just have to make this depending on the clinical uh, situation. So you have to have some control and uh, make a decision case by case. So this a uh, fracture uh, and loosening for internal implant, and this is for radial loosened zone here. And the wall has been broken. So internal implant is, was not a narrow platform. So this is all because of actual displacement. So we, you know, put another internal type again. And this is a very unique case. Uh, there was a repetitive loosening, and and it resulted in, you know, not the screw being broken, but the conic. On top of conical cylinder, the metal portion persists broke. So conical seal was really strong, so I could not remove it. So on there is the circle in here, there's top of the implant fixture, and this one cut uh, surface is the cylinder, cylinder of the prosthesis, but the conical seal was really strong. So I talked about the actual displacement as my last topic. And, you know, I also talked about preload and screw loosening. And especially for internal implant, structurally, actual displacement would be inevitable. And here in, in various steps, uh, because of there is a transfers in this complicated uh, steps, uh, screw loosening uh, could happen. So you have to have a good control. So in the internal implant, look screw uh, loosening to understand that you have to un have understand actual displacement. You have to have knowledge about that, and you have to have tightening and retightening, and you know you. Uh, and uh, that is how you get the control of the situation and have safe result. Thank you very much. Well, thank you coming all the way from Gangneung for this uh, lecture. Thank you very much for the wonderful lecture. So how did it go? It was really good. I mean, there were really nice equipment and facilities. And this is, you know, my first time here. So um, I didn't know much about the place, but uh, everybody really helped me. So it was really good. I look forward to your uh, continuing uh, lecture. Uh, I hope that we can have you again. Uh, that would be nice. Now, to reduce screw loosening in the clinical environment, uh, we uh, often use external or internal 
connection. So, what are the things to be considered、uh, in using those、uh, external internal implant connections? I do believe those that are listening to this lecture will be. They have their own clinics. Some are just starting with the implant, or、uh, some are just want to study more. But、uh, I think the screw loosening, of course, it's due to mechanical reasons, but it's、uh, due to inherent implant uh, f- functions. Uh, So it's inevitable. So you know there is a lot of challenging situations. So you know you need to be used to using external or uh, internal uh, types uh, both. But it takes time and it's not easy. So what I would like to say is that、um, now the biting force, if it's really、uh, Strong, like in the posterior area, and if you are doing the single restoration, like uh, number thirty-seven, thirty-eight on the lower,、uh, there's a single missing, or there's some、um, natural、uh, teeth right next to them, and、uh, you want to do single restoration in the middle between the natural teeth. So for those cases, it's、uh, better to use external、uh, connections and the. Diameter needs more than the IP、uh, platform. I think from、um, structure-wise, screw loosening why that would be better, because、uh, the actual displacement that I talked about today,、uh, it's inevitable、uh, for if there's implant. Plus, if you have to do single freestanding,、uh, you know, in that、uh, regards, the single in the posterior because of the continuous axial displacement and. As this is a single implant, there should be some resistance to the、uh, loosening, and there should be some、uh, anti-rotation of、uh, force. Of course, the process needs to be designed in that way, but the butt joint uh, type uh, is external type is much better than internal、uh, type. I mean, internal.、Uh, Implant. Some people、uh, prefer, and there are cases where you need to use that. But、um, external type, it's better to、uh, treat any problems and has less pr-、uh, problems. So if there is a single on the posterior side, there is a issue with the internal type.、Uh, there is not easy to、uh, remove the screw, or you know. Or the, the, if there's a bone resorption, it's very hard to、um, manage the situation. So if it's single,、uh, freestanding on the posterior external type、uh, would be my recommendation. And secondly, if there's a natural teeth on both side, sing- in that case, single restoration natural teeth is contact point. So that means that the angle of the implant、uh, it needs to be parallel to、uh, parallel. Otherwise,、uh, there could be structural、uh, issues. So conical seal, the tolerance of both side needs to be、uh, the same. Otherwise,、uh, there could be、uh, stress loaded. Too much on one wall, and when you place the、um, implant, there would be stress. So to compensate that contact point,、uh, it's uh, roughly looking at how the implant is going. It should be as much as par- parallel,、uh, and that. So、how you need to take the impression, but to do that, in, from the beginning, using the、uh, considering various、uh, strengths of the external type, I think、uh, it's better to go with the external types. So to avoid those、um, challenges, maybe using guide surgery, I think、um, the past、uh, issue will be solved. So I think guide surgery would be.、Uh, Better and for like thirty-seven or forty-seven, using external because of the actual displacement to reduce that that type of displacement. Yes, it's much better. But sometimes clinically, the hexagon type, you know,、uh, sometimes it、uh, moves, and that could be you know a concern. What do you think?
Now, it, internal is also not free from that issue. As I said in my lecture, the hexagonal external type compared to the internal hexagonal type, it's much, it's bigger, and some it's created as a slip bit type from the manufacturer, so you can uh, have a structural uh, strength. Of course, if it's loosens, uh, you can not have much uh, resistance, but internal is weaker in there. So because of uh, there's a, a contact in the, wouldn't it be better for internal type? That might be, but you know, loosening can be really uh, bad. And imagining the loosening, it's better to and easier to manage if it's external type. So that's why I prefer the external type. And if you look at other people, uh, you know, and if they ask my uh, opinion, I always recommend uh, the external type. Yes, I think per everybody has their preference, of course. Now, second question. It's about XL displacement. Uh, so the internal type implant, uh, if you do internal implant rest, uh, restoration, any guideline to reduce the actual displacement, uh, you know, don't do in one step, retightening will be needed is my recommendation. So manual controller, you use that, right? So within that range, uh, you know, comply with the recommended values. So first you take impression and when you create prosthesis, the internal implants, you need to have a temporization period. That is very important. Be it cement type or screw type, temporization, uh, that period is needed before, so that the, you know, there's a preload that result in displacement and, you know, biting force also plays a role. So you have to have a temporary period and, you know, do retightening and take impression uh, before you put in the final uh, prosthesis. So again, retightening is a must step in my opinion. So if you talk to the dentist, those that, you know, think always uh, think based their own clinical experience or, or some people are based in literature. So they say, you know, do four times of tightening or do it uh, once after 10 minutes based on their clinical experience. But I don't think that's meaningful because there is always biting force. So if you want to stable internal implant and if you're in hurry, maybe inevitable. But again, temporization period, then confirm the preload again before you move to the final prosthesis. So, you know, tightening, loosening, do it a few times. I think three times uh, was valid according to my study for uh, or experiment for a, a paper. But I don't know whether this is a good analogy, but if you, before you run, you have to have a, a warm up phase, right? So, you know, don't do don't run um you know without warming up uh warming up makes it more things more maybe softer right yes so you when you tighten the screw how much newton do you how much of a newton do you use you know this is a abutment screw so for that the manufacturer recommendation is what i would like to adhere, but uh, if it's retaining screw, I mean, I uh, use a lot of screw types. I personally prefer that. So that one, I don't use that because manually, the most important is from t impression taking, having your own standards is very important to control errors. So for retaining uh, screws, now uh, manual torque driver, and the last one I use is long arm because the torque uh, increases with the length also. Because of the space, you start with a short one, uh, short manual uh, driver for retaining screw. So summary for the 
a bunch of screw. What is recommended by the manufacturer and retaining a screw? You start with the short one to you know make it easy, and the last step is to use long driver and tighten with the hand again so the torque can be maintained. Now, cement type or cat cam abutment, when you use them, in terms of screw loosening, is there anything we need to watch out for? Depending whether it's external or external, there will be a difference. As I said before, prosthesis guideline, the retightening concept is something that you need to uh, think about for cement type or cat cam type, which is, you know, popular these days. So if you, you know, watch carefully, you will see that for the ready-made um, abutment, uh, when they fabric in the lab, especially for CAD CAM abutment, if you look at inside, sometimes there is a lot of uh, debris or something remaining in there. And in the lab, unless you, you know, uh, are there always uh, tell telling and be careful not to have the debris, you don't really know how many abutment screw has been tightened. So what I'm trying to say is that inside the cylinder, mechanical, uh, you know, fabrication lifts up with debris and between threads, the, the valleys, what you call that, the sometimes it looks like a black uh, line it doesn't let remove them even if they remove uh, all if you see closely there's always something remaining so what i recommend is if it's a cement type or cat cam type of abutment now we talked about preload or excel displacement and you know you have to control the torque it's the same here but the screw loosening is all about you know there should be nothing inside Hence, you know, use ultrasound or, you know, like you could use also steam showering uh, equipment or device. So please clean the cylinder and for abutment screw, it's better to use a new one, you know, fresh ones. The, the hex and screws, uh, you can never be confident it's completely removed. So when it comes from the lab, ask for the same size a new one also that would be better but it doesn't you know insurance doesn't cover that but anyways but maybe if you you can get a mass discount if you buy a lot from most them maybe okay last question now in case of using digital one guide and it's placing implant in the ideal position then in terms of screw loosening or fracturing, wouldn't it be better? That's a good uh, point. I think that is the right uh, concept because we are talking about screw loosening today, but from high level, uh, you know, it's about misfit of prosthesis or when you have two connecting, there is a, is a you know, slope or angle and there's a, like dynamic things in the bite because of the occlusion uh, uh, plane. So there's a lot of dynamics and complications. So to minimize, um, you know, in the occlusion plane, you have to make it vertical. That is the basic uh, principle. So guide-based surgery, uh, it's much better than trying to do it with your hands or manually. I think that will be the future direction. Yes, I think so too. So as you have said, that it's, it's the way that using the digital guide to is the way to reduce complications. So, you know, it's um, much better to reduce complications. So it's better for you to get used to using that type of digital guides. Now, thank you very much for that wonderful uh, lecture. But before I let you go, I'd like to ask, uh, you know, any thing you would like to say the student or colleague that wants to do very good uh, prosthetics well i'm a teacher so you know i always tell them everybody to study but anyway uh red i think what is important is get as much information possible and make their own 
and also used it in your、uh, surgery skills. That's what I want to say. So you say、uh, you. Get the knowledge in your head, and you know, use that knowledge to improve your、uh, surgery skills. So you need a lot of practice, right? So you need a lot to study and do the patient、uh, treatment also very well, and practice, practice, right? Yes. So again, I hope、um, today's lecture and Q and A session. Has been very helpful to the dentist to learn more about how to respond to any、uh, screw、uh, loosening situations. Thank you very much. So that was the lecture for this、uh, prosthetics on Friday. If there is any question we are not able to answer, please visit dental. Website.、Uh, we will post the answers. And at next Friday,、uh, December eleventh, we will have another lecture series.、Uh, this time, we will uh, look at uh, food uh, impact and also mastication. And、uh, we hope to see you next time. Thank you very much.